of the New Orleans Saints. NFL's biggest story this season, making the playoffs for the first time in their history this year. Play the Minnesota Vikings here this Sunday. Owner Tom Benson has the whole town boogieing. New Orleans can be one of the great holiday playgrounds. Last night, despite rain, thousands gathered at Jackson Square to whoop in the new year. Orange is very much the color in New Orleans this year for Syracuse, of course. Burnt orange and navy blue for Auburn. And faithful partisans by the thousand. And we're ready to play the 54th U.S. F&G Sugar Bowl game. ABC Sports presents... College Football. Today in New Orleans, the champions of the Southeastern Conference, the Auburn Tigers, beat the Syracuse Orange men. Linebacker Andre Bruce, a principal in an Auburn defense that allowed only 12 touchdowns this season, but that defense will be challenged by a versatile Syracuse offense led by quarterback Don McPherson, the nation's most efficient quarterback. It is the first time these teams and coaches have met. Pat Dye of Auburn, Dick McPherson of Syracuse. The Orange men, fourth ranked, undefeated. The Tigers, number six in the nation. Today, in the USF&G Sugar Bowl on ABC Sports College Football. Ah, we're indoors, and it's a good thing. The weather outside has been frightful over the last few hours with rain, and we should have ourselves a time on this New Year's Day from the Louisiana Superdome as the Syracuse Orange men and the Auburn Tigers get together for the first time in a college football game. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson, and may I wish all of you a very prosperous and happy New Year. For you and your family, and for all of us, I guess, we could use a good, happy New Year. And it's a great pleasure to see the Syracuse Orange men bouncing back and playing in a significant bowl game. Testimony to the kind of work that Coach Dick McPherson, his staff, and players have done to bring this team in undefeated against the SEC champion Auburn Tigers. It is interesting, too, I think, that members of the Syracuse coaching staff went down to Auburn during spring practice and studied the Auburn system under Pat Dye. And here they are, ready to jawbone each other on New Year's Day. Where will the game swing? Well, we put the question to the two coaches, and here are their comments. You know, I don't know if we can stop Syracuse or not. If we can stop them and control them a little bit with our defense, and I think the game may be decided between our offense and their defense. I think the big thing is, is they got a great defense. Last three SEC games, one touchdown against them. We can move the football. If we can't move the football against anybody, we're in trouble. The only thing that I can see that compares them is Penn State 86. Two great defenses. Pat Dye already says it's the best he's ever had. So that's a tremendous challenge. Can we... Can we run the opposite? Can we throw the drop back? Can we run the power game at him? It's going to be a lot of fun. If we can't, amen. Well, Bob Gracie, I think you've got a little different opinion on what may happen. Well, I think what Pat Dye said may be very true, but, uh, you know, this is an exciting game for me, and I think it's going to be an exciting game for our viewers. we got two of the top quarterbacks in the nation here today. First for Auburn, Jeff Berger the Southeastern Conference Player of the Year. Now, the last four years, Auburn has led the SEC in rushing. This year, they're 10th in rushing, second in passing. Berger has got to lead this team if they hope to win. On the other side, you've got Donnie McPherson, consensus All-American, second in the Heisman Trophy balloting, the nation's number one passer. He's got to lead. He is the offense for Syracuse, and he has to play well, but he's got a problem. He's going up against an outstanding defense, University of Auburn. Take a look at the statistics and what Auburn has done in the SEC this year. They're first against the rush, first in scoring, quarterback sacks and interceptions. They lead. They're second in pass defense and total defense. This should be an outstanding game. And who better to have Syracuse going against that tough defense than Donnie McPherson, the consensus All-American quarterback. But there is a big, big worry on the part of Dick McPherson. His big guy in the middle of his defensive front, Ted Gregory, is coming off arthroscopy. And uh, he may not be that efficient. You know, and they talk about uh, uh, 
Gregory as though if he doesn't play, their whole defense is entirely different. I've never heard anybody talk about one player, a nose guard, with as much regard and much respect as they do Gregory. Of course, a nose guard, if he plays well, can stop the run. And if, if Auburn has any desire to try and run today, Gregory needs to play well, and we're going to check him out early in the ballgame. Auburn offers two outstanding linebackers, Kurt Crane in the middle. Man never seems to make a mistake. Yeah. But they got this big guy outside, Andre Bruce, and you know he's going to be looping and hunting all day. He is an impact player. They have talked about him in the same breath as Lawrence Taylor. He certainly can make some big plays. He's a huge man. We'll keep an eye on him today, too. Well, the roar is starting to swell in the background as the white-shirted visiting Syracuse Orange men now are about to make their entry into the Louisiana Superdome and the 54th USFNG Sugar Bowl game and there's a whole lot of folks down here from Syracuse. So they're going to wait and bring one out one in and Auburn's over at the other end as the Auburn band moves into place and here are the Orange. 11 and 0 Dick McPherson seven seasons 41 36 and one voted coach of the year by the Walter Camp Foundation. He's a good Scotsman from Old Town Maine and he is a delight. Or Eagle. Pat by third SEC championship, nine one and one, seventh season at Auburn, sixty one, twenty one and one. Dick McPherson waited a long time to be a head coach. And he's got the job he wants and he's done a heck of a job with it and he is not concerned about anything but how much fun he's having. Auburn's been here forever. They can't be enjoying this as much as we are. They just can't be nor can it mean as much to them. They're only playing a little team from out of the east. We're dying for them. So turn the wheels and turn up the banjo and everybody get on your dancing shoes because we've got a dandy ready today at the Louisiana Superdome. Everybody knows this baby. It's a Jeep and it's back home again. Jeep is now part of Chrysler. And one thing we know for sure, if you're going to put a new car alongside a legend, you better do it right. So we're introducing the first new American car brand in 30 years, Eagle. This is Eagle Premier, European styling and the most aerodynamic sedan built on this continent. In addition, front wheel drive, overhead cam V6, multi-port fuel injection. The works. We gave it quality. It's built in the newest high-tech plant in North America. Quality we backed with seven years, 70,000 mile protection. The American car buyer expects the best. Wrangler, Cherokee, Comanche, and now Premier. Legend says Jeeps always land on their feet. And Eagles, well, they gotta fly. You can bet on it. You take your risks in business, so you'd like some guarantees. And one thing you can count on is USFNG. Protecting small businesses from big risks is our business at USFNG Insurance. Ask your independent agent. We got you covered, America. We're making your hard work pay. USFNG covers the USA. The USFNG Sugar Bowl, an ABC sports exclusive, brought to you by. USF&G, all across this country, USF&G protects your business, home, auto, and life. USF&G covers the USA. By 3M, worldwide sponsor of the 1988 Olympic Games, 3M, supporting the dream. By the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And by the new Jeep Eagle Division of Chrysler Corporation, you can expect the best. The two teams are on the field and about ready to go. A moment with Mike Adamley. Well, Keith, everybody talks about Syracuse's great tradition of running backs, Jim Brown, Ernie Davis, Floyd Little. Auburn's got a pretty fair tradition himself, and perhaps 
the greatest running back Auburn's ever produced, their 1985 Heisman Trophy winner, Bo Jackson. Bo, you seem to be as excited about this game as the players do. Well, I'm here for one reason, and that's to get Auburn fired up to go out to try to beat these guys this afternoon. I know you're under the microscope, your professional athletic career, but you seem to come back here to Auburn and come back to be with your team and be just one of the guys. Well, Auburn is where Bo Jackson was discovered, and you can never forget where you come from. Okay, good luck today. Happy New Year. Thank you, and a happy New Year. Keep him going. All right, keep. And our boy, Bo, don't ever forget. Chris Johnson will kick it off for the blue-shirted Tigers. And we're ready to go. Syracuse receiving. They won the toss. They want the ball. It takes a funny little bounce, and finally it's picked up by one of the big up men. And the Orange will possess the ball up around their 24-yard line. Kelly, Stoppel, Flannery, Garrett, Bednarz, and Sims, the big people up front for the Orange. Kane wide, Glover wide. Don McPherson, the quarterback, multi-talented fellow. Johnson and Drummond, the running backs. And here comes your first snap of the ball game. Keep your eye on 82. He's a dandy. He can fly. So can that tight end, Pat Kelly. Big target, and they're going to throw on the first down. And the shot down the field, out of bounds. First down up at the 41, Jamal Glover making the catch of Junior from Troy, New York. The defense for Auburn, Stallworth, Roland Hill, Bruce Phillips, Crane, and Ogletree, three linebackers, outstanding. Bruce uh, plays uh, outside, very good one. Reed, Staples, Cheatham, and Briggs, and look out for some pressure on young Perry Reed, who is a freshman, replacing Kevin Porter, their all-conference performer, who is off the team because of contact with an agent. It is first down for Syracuse, and they send Glover in motion. And McPherson going to stay in the air, goes down the middle, intended that time for the tight end Kelly, and he was tipped at the line of scrimmage. These people up front for the Auburn defense, Stallworth stands 6'5", Benji Rowland is 6'4", Nate Hill is 6'5", and when they get up in the air and raise those arms, uh, you got to put some uh, loft on the ball. And it's a very aggressive front uh, five, uh, the three down linemen, the two outside linebackers. Offensive coordinator for Syracuse, George DeLeon, was saying, we'd love to play seven on seven, take away those front four, and we'd love to throw against them. He feels the strength is in the D Auburn defensive line. It is second down and ten for Syracuse. Option down the line. McPherson gets around the corner. There is a penalty flag in his wake. He gets a big gain out of it down inside the Auburn 40. Run down by Andre Bruce. But let's see about the penalty flag. The referee is John McClinic. All the officials are out of the Big 8 conference. Offside, Auburn. They'll turn it down, and it'll be first down Syracuse. J.C. Leimbach, the umpire. Butch Clark, the field judge. Tom Ehlers, the linesman. Mike Porgard, the side judge. Ken Hauk, the line judge. Artie Polk is the back judge, as I said, from the Big 8. Dick McPherson is uh, explaining to one of the officials that one of his players was uh, un uh, unduly thrown to the ground or battered on the head. McPherson, very, uh, very outspoken, very uh, well regarded by his players and very well respected. Well, just inside the 40 of Auburn, first down for the Orange. McPherson rides it off to the fullback, and he runs into a stack of humanity wearing blue, anchored by big Nate Hill, the senior from LaGrange, Georgia. Big Nate, 6'5", 266, 6'4", 270, and 6'5", 260 across that defensive front. The linebackers are all pretty good size, too. Ogletree, 6'3", Crane, 6'2", Phillips, 6'2", and Bruce, 6'6". Six, six. So they're tall. It is second down, about nine. They had Kelly in motion going back inside. McPherson caught and dropped back behind the 45 by Ron Stolworth. Remember, Tracy Rocker, an All-American defensive tackle, tore up a knee and is out for the rest of the season. But Stolworth and his colleagues have stepped to the fore in the absence of Tracy Rocker. And young David Rocker, only a freshman, 
still growing at 6'4 and 260 has stepped in to play well too. Uh, Keith, if there's a weakness for the Syracuse offense, it was in their offensive line early in the year. They've got two redshirt freshmen and one sophomore in the offensive line. Auburn wants to pressure McPherson if they can. It is third down and 17. The ball back near the 47. Short drop by McPherson, runs a quarterback draw, and he is nailed down at the 42-yard line. He got away from Robert Goff, a down lineman who had stepped in at nose guard. And so now it is fourth down. And Cooper Gardner, he was a starting safety. Gardner was a year ago, but he kept getting concussions. And he has been doing the putting this year. On 43 kicks, he is average better than 37 yards per putt. And Freddie Wagand is deep. Wagand, uh, a speedster. Wide receiver. Normally handles the ball very surely. He will call a fair catch and make the catch out at the 13 yard line. So the Auburn Tigers don't have very good field position for their opening possession. But they'll take it and we'll see what happens in a moment. We're not a company, but we'll give you a chance to work where there's always a challenge. We'll give you opportunities to learn, to develop to perfect skills that you thought were beyond your reach. We'll help you build a career, a career that can reward you for the rest of your life. We're not a company, we're your country. We're the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Precise, sophisticated, and a seven-year, 70,000-mile protection plan. Introducing the 1988 Eagle Premier from the Jeep Eagle division of the Chrysler Corporation. On the Disney Sunday movie... I've really been gone eight years. The key to this mystery lies beyond the stars. Flight of the Navigator, Sunday. the Auburn offense for you as the Tigers come up on the ball for their first snap of this game at Jeff Berger at quarterback better than 2,000 yards throwing the ball this season and it's no longer a gimme that Auburn's going to run the football in this end of the field but they do and on the first carry it's Stacy Danley and Danley a freshman red shirt out of Winston Georgia 205 pounds spins out of there and picks up pretty good yardage Reeves, Floyd, Dunn, Hudson, Garner, Searles up front for the Tigers with uh, Tillman, Lawyer Tillman, 6'4", fine athlete, one of the wide receivers, Duke Donaldson, who is a speed burner, also outside with Ware and Danley lined up behind Berger. Pick up on the play of about six yards. It is second down and four for Auburn. Pitch it to Danley. Gets his cut, gets his block, gets the first down up at the 29-yard line. Defensively for Syracuse, along the defensive front, Paul Fraze, 265-65. Ted Gregory is starting, so leg and all. He's a gamer. 6'1", 260. Rob Burnett, 255, the other tackle. The backers, uh, you saw there, and the defensive secondary, Ingram, Mangrum, Paul, and Holmes. And Marcus Paul, outstanding in the defensive secondary for Syracuse. He's out of Florida. He can run. Back goes Berger on first down. Throws underneath, but the pass is incomplete. He threw the ball to his man right in front of the backer who dropped off, and Danley couldn't make the catch. Let's go in and take a look at Ted Gregory, the All-American, number 93 in orange, right in the middle of your screen, being blocked one-on-one -on -one by the center. Now he gets a little help from the left guard. Expect to see that all day, but no apparent signs that that leg is giving him any problems. We'll see what happens when he gets a little tired because I don't care what they say, it hurts when you had a scope job done on a knee. Scott Bolton is in the lineup now for Auburn, and Burgess whips his pass over there. It's caught by Duke Donaldson, and Duke's decked up around the 33 yard line, well short of the first down. That dive. Facing the sideline. He's developed a program at Auburn that has depth to sustain. He's got an all-star team hurt on the sideline. There's no question. You mentioned depth. 
he will he will run in uh, offensive and defensive players in early in the ball game. He says our games are won in the fourth quarter. He uses players he takes out as all Americans. His all Americans only play two thirds of the ball game. It is third and seven for the Tigers, and they run it up the middle on a little delay, and Danley can't shake it, and it's going to bring up fourth down, and the Tigers will have to punt it away. So Syracuse moved it some on their first possession. Auburn moved it some on their first possession. Now the punt from Brian Schulman, averaging better than 40 yards per kick, spins it out of there. It's a good kick. Connie Kane takes it and can't break it as he is swarmed back around the 28-yard line. That's a 40-yard punt, three-yard return with 10 minutes and 13 seconds to go in the first quarter of the USFNG Sugar Bowl. There is much to admire about European touring sedans. The sophisticated styling, their agility and precise handling. It is in that spirit that we offer this car. But we've added a few unorthodox notions, like real comfort and a seven-year, 70,000-mile protection plan. Introducing the 1988 Eagle Premier, properly named because Premier is a first, an American car with European sophistication and handling. What it means to you to be a client of ours. At Shearson Lehman Brothers and E.F. Hutton, it means understanding you your needs and concerns as an investor. It means working with you one-to-one -one in a manner at once personal and professional. And as a new year begins, it will mean knowing you are part of an investment firm big enough in every sense of the word to treat you as an individual. Shearson Lehman Brothers and E.F. Hutton. <laughs> Syracuse, second possession of the ball game. Number 95, David Rocker, young man I mentioned a moment ago, true freshman, 6'4", 260. And very quickly, Pat Nye is putting in fresh people. If you don't see the unexpected in the first possession, you're almost certain to see it in the second. So let's see what Syracuse, if they've got something else in mind. McPherson was the dominant figure in the opening possession. And he hands it off this time to his tailback, Robert Drummond. And Drummond out of the eye formation, pounds in there for about three yards. Keith, Syracuse's offense is, is noted for a big play offense. Yesterday, in talking with the uh, defensive coaches, Wayne Hall, the coordinator for Auburn, he says the key thing we want to do is take away the big play. This year, Syracuse, on their first possession in 11 games, scored on seven of them. They didn't score here today, but they're playing a very tough defense. Kane comes wide to the bottom of the picture. And they bring Glover in motion toward Kane. That gives them double wide, bottom of the screen, and they pitch it back to Drummond. Drummond can't get the block to turn the corner, and he's knocked out of bounds up around the 36. They've got to go past the 38 to pick up the first down. The strong safety, Greg Staples, got the tackle for Auburn. One of the things that makes this offense for Syracuse so tough is the ability of McPherson. Not only is he a drop-back passer and could play for a lot of colleges in the country that play drop-back passing, he could also play for Oklahoma, who uses an option type of game. He's a great option player and also a drop back passer. Third and about three. This has got run all over it. And he's got his first down. Nothing fancy. Once that quarterback gets out and turns up like that, it just simply becomes old single wing football, doesn't it? Power football. Well, it was an option, run or pass, and that is the, the, the way McPherson looked at it. Run first and pass second. He had a couple receivers down, but he said, if I can make three yards and a first down, I'm going to run it. He's gained 22 yards and four rushes. The ball is at the Syracuse 41. First down for the Orange men. Rocker is out. Benji Rowland back in on the defensive front for Auburn. Right back, McPherson. Get some heat. Down he goes, all the way back at the 27. Robert Goff and Ron Stolworth for the Tigers. Russ 
go back and take a look why the sack occurred. This receiver is going to hook here. The tight end is going to be here. They're both going to be covered. Watch the two receivers. He drops back and looks this side. Now, if you hold it just about here, hold it. You see the man here and the man right here, both covered. That's what we call a coverage sack. And it brings up second and long. The ball all the way back at the 27. They've got to go to the Auburn 49. They need 19 yards on the hand it off. Keep it on the ground. Don't get too fancy back here where you might lose the ball. Darrell Johnson, the fullback, the junior from Youngstown, New York, is wrapped up by Edward Phillips and Quentin Riggins. And it'll be fourth down for Syracuse. Well, it'll be third down. Syracuse. Third down, yeah, third and a third and a long way to go. It looks like it might be fourth. This is an area that uh, Syracuse has used a quick kick in the past. Uh, Keith, I don't know if they're going to use it here, but back up in their own area, third and long, but they don't want to turn it over. Good place to do it. They might try. Johnson would do it. Here it comes. You called it. He doesn't get a good one. He sort of hit it straight up, but gets a good bounce out of it. And now it's going to roll inside the Auburn 35 and down to the 33, the 32, and they'll take every inch and put it down near the 31. Bobby Dodd used the quick kick. General Nalen used the quick kick. Tommy Prothrow used. All these people you have used it over the years as an offensive weapon, and Dick McPherson has it very prominent in his repertoire. And though Johnson didn't get his uh, foot all on the ball, he got enough of the roll. Normally, a fullback has averaged over 55 yards this year on three kicks. We haven't missed a morning in seven years. She wants this more than anything in the world. At 3M, we know that dreams, like ideas, won't live without the support of others. So as you watch the 1988 Olympic Games, remember nobody got there alone. 3M, supporting the dream. It has the sophisticated styling of a European touring sedan and that wonderful European capability underway. Agile, precise, with room, more passenger room than any car in its class, and a seven-year, 70,000-mile protection plan. Introducing the 1988 Eagle Premier. It's well-named because it's a first. An American car with European sophistication and handling. Bowling's Winter Tour gets rolling with the $125,000 ARC Alameda Open. Tomorrow on the season premiere of ABC's Professional Bowlers Tour. Now it is the second possession for the Auburn Tigers. Pat Thay there in the striped shirt. Pat Sullivan is the man that handles the play calling. He's almost been the personal tutor in the development of Jeff Berger at quarterback in the Auburn passing game. Berger stands up, whips it out to the side, caught by Duke Donaldson. Donaldson lets it go downfield. Lawyer Tillman's got it! Inside the 10. Marcus Paul saved the touchdown. Tillman's just going to go straight down as the quick screen pulls the corner up. Paul, number 10, doesn't get back in time as Tillman, the big play man for this Auburn offense, makes a big play early in the ballgame. So the big junior travels 58 yards on the play, and it's first down. Auburn at the Syracuse 10. I told you that second possession was had some firecrackers in well, it. Everybody almost. loosens up, as you well know. Yeah. All right. Berger pitches it to Danley. Going to run the reverse. Coming around with it. That's Freddie Wagan. And not much working on that, baby. They lost two. So the Orange play it well. Well, we get a flea flicker on the first play of this possession and a reverse on the second play. You know, I think Auburn's offense is known as a ball control conservative offense. And it is. But it catches like that last one by Lawyer Tillman. Makes everybody think, hey, this is a big play offense. Tillman can make the big play, but the predominant offense is the conservative ball control. Yeah, but that's side. totally out of character with the history of Pat Dye. It's He's a, a north-south man around that 10-yard line. Yeah, that's true. It's a, it's a bowl game, though, and they don't have anything to go from here. 
They'll run it this time. Benley sucks it back into the middle, and he was within one arm of going into the end zone. It was Rob Burnett that tripped him up. Take a look at it from the side. Eye formation, straight blocking. Finds a little crease in the defensive line. Makes a nice gain to about the six-yard line. There's a penalty flag across the way on the opposite side of the field, and that's why the discussion amongst the officials. We got another flag just thrown right now. We had illegal procedure on the offense. Too many men in the backfield. Five yard penalty. Well, he said too many men in the backfield. I think he was looking at it from the uh, from the other's perspective. That means not enough men on the line. You can have as you can have uh, you can have one or two or, or three in the backfield as long as you have seven or six on the offensive line. So the five yards will bring Auburn back to their 17. You don't think Coach Mack's not in the game? He wants a time. Wants a timeout. There's something wrong. He wants a timeout. I think he wants to talk to the officials a little bit more about it. He says, come here. He's now called Derek Ward to the sideline. He's entitled to conference, but if he takes a conference, uh, it can cost him a timeout, but he's already spent his timeout. Now, if he has a conversation here with John McClinic, and I'll tell you right now, this is one of the better officials you'll see work, and he's going to grant him the courtesy of the conversation. It has to do with interpretation of rule, then uh, that's where the additional timeout could be charged. John McClinic, incidentally, told me last night this is his last game. He's going to retire. Looked like he was saying something about 15 yards. Now, he said too many men in the backfield. You have to have seven men on the line of scrimmage. You can have eight or nine or ten, but you have to have seven. I've never heard an official say too many men in the backfield. I'm sure he meant not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Now, <laughs> I don't know what they're discussing over here. Maybe well, maybe he wanted to decline the penalty. Well, I don't know why he would, but uh, still he might have. I don't. That's a five-yard penalty, not a 15. That's right. Well, he had his piece, and I'm sure he feels much better about it. <laughs> Mac was an uh, outstanding uh, coach. He coached in the Crows for a while, coached for the Cleveland Browns and the Denver Broncos. He's doing an outstanding job at uh, Syracuse. All right, his second down and goal. The ball is back at the 17. The series started right on the 10. Burgers pass goes into the corner. Tillman! Touchdown! That Lawyer Tillman is 6'4 and a great leaper. Right here, he's just going to go down and break to the corner. Now, there's no one out here. When he sees that immediately, he's thinking, I got some good things that are going to go on. He's going to release to the outside. The outside man just holds his defensive back. A nice throw high into the outside and a good throw by Berger. Win Lyle, sophomore from Auburn, stayed home to play and pulls it through. So with five minutes and 47 seconds to play in the first quarter, the Tigers go to the lead. Berger, I mean, uh, Tillman, number 85 in the center of your screen, is going to release around. Now he holds the safety who's going to come into your picture just about now. Ten is Paul, who leads the team in interceptions and just could not get there because the ball was thrown perfectly. And as you mentioned, Tillman with his 6'4 height made the catch. You've built a name in business for all the world to see. So build in the protection of USFNG. Across the USA, the big name for protecting business is USFNG Insurance. Ask your independent agent. We got you covered, America, to every business day. USFNG covers the USA. In one of these, and in one of these, one of these, lasts longer than all the rest. 
Laboratory tests prove in most devices, Energizer lasts longer than any other battery. New Energizer! Oi! It's a big game, big boy. But you got the stuff because you got off the ground this morning with a real winner. Wheaties, Wheaties, your whole wheat. Now go tell your mama what the big boys eat. There will be people who will argue forever that Jim Brown was football's greatest running back. And as long as there is history film, they'll have a case, both at Syracuse and later with the Cleveland Browns. Brown's senior year, Syracuse went to the Cotton Bowl. Remember that Jim Brown only played eight regular season games in college. Let's go back and take a look at the protection and Berger, number 93 is Gregory. You see three men there blocking him as responsible. Berger gets the ball off high and quickly. This is not a pass that takes a long time to throw. You're down near the end zone. And an outstanding catch. Jeff Berger, who's got to feel like in his senior year, he's had a black cat walking under ladders and a cloud following him because he's had his share of troubles. But I'll tell you one thing, you beat him, you're going to come out of there with skin knuckles because he is a tough kid from Cedartown, Georgia. He's had the, been a lot of distractions for this Auburn team this year, but they've hung together. Uh, kicks off now to Michael Owens. Owens back inside the five, gets some daylight out to the 20, 21. Tomorrow on ABC Sports, the return to the Professional Bowlers Tour. The first stop, $125,000 ARC Alameda Open. Then we'll have the season premiere of ABC's Wide World of Sports, the Harlem Globetrotters from Berlin, West Germany. And the Athlete of the Year Award presentation. All of it begins at 3 Eastern and Pacific, 2 Central tomorrow on ABC Sports. All right, 7-0. The Auburn Tigers and the Syracuse Orangemen now with their third possession in the first quarter. And the ball is just outside the 20. They send Kelly in motion. And McPherson rides it down the line and will lose at least three as Quentin Riggins, a sophomore linebacker from Montgomery, number 41, got him. Clemson rolled over Penn State 35-10 in the Florida Citrus Bowl. Fourth quarter, Nebraska leads Florida State 28-24. Cotton Bowl, Texas A&M 25-10, third quarter over Notre Dame. Looks like Jackie Sherrill's Aggies are romping. Second down for Syracuse, 13. McPherson option goes outside with it. Ball rolling around on the ground, diving for it. Drummond, and I think Robert saved it. There were two Tigers pinching McPherson, and they almost lost the ball. Well, that Riggins was right in there. He is really quick. So was 96 Roland. Take a look right here. Roland is going to get around and force as he comes down to make the pitch. Roland 96 at defensive tackle this time. Gets around the block, a poor block, forces him to pitch it quickly. A poor throw, and they're doing a nice job of forcing that option. Now they're all the way back on the 12, and here's a quick kick. And this time he doesn't get the big bounce. It bounces back upfield and will be just across midfield on the Syracuse side. So Johnson. Got it away, but with the bounce coming back toward him, he was only able to total 38 yards. Take a look at Johnson. He's lined up deep in the tailback. He's normally the fullback. When they switch and go like that, you can be alerted. It might be a quick kick. They always use it when they're backed up inside their 30-yard line. Of course, they don't do that only when they're going to quick kick. There are some occasions in the ball game where Johnson and the tailback do switch. But when you're backed up like that and it's third and long, you can look for a quick kick. And you don't want the spiral on that kind of a kick either. You want that end over end, that driver, so it'll bounce. Exactly. That time it didn't. Berger drops the pass on first down, gets some heat, runs away from it. Now he's got a problem. And Jeff will lose back to the 46. A very good pursuit by Paul Fraze, a senior from Barrington, New Hampshire. And a good call, Keith, offensively. You've got Syracuse down a little bit. Their offense is sputtering the last few. You've got good field position almost at the 50-yard line. 
first down's a great time to throw. Just nobody was open. Ball is marked back inside the 47, just outside the 46 of Auburn. And it's second down and 14. Berger, a little quick pop, throws it out to the side. That goes to Wigand. But he shakes one, and he's out of bounds. Just at the 46 of Syracuse. So a fair gain on the play. It'll bring up third down, and here's Mike Adamley. Well, Keith, that play right before the lawyer Tillman touchdown reception, you might wonder why Dick McPherson was arguing so vociferously. His contention was not only did Auburn have too many men in the backfield, but too many men on the field, period. 12 men on the field. He said of an, instead of a five-yard, or in addition to the five-yard penalty, it should have been also loss of down. So that's why he was hooting and hollering. Well, he got your attention. From the 46, it is third down and a short seven. Berger's pass picked off. The Auburn receiver never looked back. I don't think either one of the two receivers were ready to make an effort at the ball, and Berger is picked off by David Holm, the right quarterback, a junior from Burlington, New Jersey. Neither man was really available, but I think the receivers could have at least kept the ball from being intercepted. Well, what happens on a case like this, Keith, is there's supposed to be an adjustment ran. Berger thought he was going to run a different route. The receiver just kept going straight up field. He was throwing for a spot. He expected the receiver to be in that spot. The receiver ran a different route. Watch him. He goes straight up the field. That's 24 Bolton. He goes straight up, and the ball is thrown in. He expected him to square in and catch that football. And so Syracuse makes a break now. First down at their own 42. Auburn leading 7-0 in the first quarter. The fullback, Johnson, Darrell Johnson, just keeps on pounding, and he picked up about six on that carry. Michael Owens is in the backfield now. He's number 44, a sophomore from uh, Carlisle, Pennsylvania. To look at the quarterback comparison so far, Berger getting the best of it. McPherson's been sacked a couple of times. Tried to run the option, and that has not been there either. That's why Johnston up the middle. At this point, he needs to run that a few more times to hold him inside. From the 49, second down and three, and they take it right up the middle and pick up the first down near the Auburn 46-yard line. And it's Johnson carrying again. When the big down people are committing themselves and uh, flying in, it, they're easier to block. Nudge them out of the way and let the big fullback bound. So all the big plays are made for Syracuse. When McPherson gets outside, either keeps it or pitches it back. They're not going to get hurt with big plays by forcing Johnston, the fullback, to run inside. First down, Orange. McPherson coming down the line, now sets the pass, shoots it deep. Nobody there. Nobody there. Running deep under the ball was Rob Moore, Tommy Kane, number 82, the wideout from Montreal, Quebec. Turned back inside looking for the ball, and by the time he'd done that, school was out. McPherson had to let it go. You know, Kane has caught 14 touchdown passes this year. In fact, leads the NCAA in that category. One of the reasons he's caught so many touchdown passes is because of the option, as you saw right there. Their defense is concerned about the option. McPherson comes down, fakes the option, drops back, and hits Kane, who's averaging 22 yards for big plays, not that time. McPherson still got it, gets around the corner, turns it, first down, still going inside the 30, down to the Auburn 27. Take a look at the line play offensively for Syracuse. 79 is Bensnard, gets a nice block outside. Johnston, 32, pushes his man, the linebacker Crane, out. And the quarterback, McPherson, who led this team in rushing the last two years, was fourth this year, picks up 25 yards. Kurt Crane overran that play just a bit, helping Johnson's effort to keep him off the quarterback. You don't see him do that often. They'll try to run up the middle again, and Johnson has stood up at the 25. Johnson is a big, tough kid, a fullback. Reminds me of a little bit of another guy that played fullback for Syracuse a few years back, named Larry Zonka. 
fact, I was at the, one of their breakfast meetings yesterday, and Johnston came over, and we were chatting a little bit. He was wondering about Zonka. And to know if all those stories that Zonka is telling me is uh, telling everybody about me are true. Evidently, Zonka spoke to the Syracuse football banquet after the regular season was over with. Zonk's telling stories on you. Yeah, and another much story. <laughs> <laughs> Back there's an option down the line. Looks at the corner, run down by number 96, Benji Rowland. Oh, Benji is active in the middle there. A lot of sophomores, juniors, and freshmen on this Auburn football team. Reggie Slack figures the heir apparent at quarterback when Berger leaves. They'll get Tracy Rocker back next year as well. well it looks like a pretty good football they team are, next They year. are big and strong, and as McPherson said, and besides that, they're quick. Third down and three. McPherson rolls out, option on the play, got enough room to get his first down, and takes it to the 15-yard line before Kurt Crane gets him. They're going to give him the 14-yard line. Here's the All-American, number 39, Crane. He flows with the quarterback. When the quarterback rolls out, everybody is covered. McPherson has a little bit more speed than Crane. Picks up the yardage for the first, bat, first down. But Crane is a walk-on. The transfer from Memphis State who has come on and really is the leader of that defense. McPherson has run nine times for 36 yards. Hands the ball off to number 32. That's Johnson. Johnson running out of the eye back position that time. And he'll pick up a yard or so. I'm gone. The first quarter of play. So after one in the 54th USF and G Sugar Bowl, it's Auburn seven and Syracuse threatening. You know, there are a lot of places where you can look for an auto part. But here is where you'll find it. Napa. We've got your part. In fact, we have more than 125,000 parts available. Napa has parts for imports and other hard to find parts and at the right prices. So don't waste time looking anyplace else. Come to Napa first. We've got your part. My brother used to have remotes all over the place. They were everywhere. I a TV find remote, it. a cable remote, yeah. a VCR remote. Yeah. My brother was very confused. I was very confused. I don't even know how to work this. Then my brother bought a Magnavox time. TV with this amazing new remote. A Magnavox invented it. It's three remotes in one. It controls the Magnavox TV it came with and just about any other brand of wireless cable and VCR. So my brother's not confused anymore. Yeah, and neither am I. <laughs> That's right. This week, he's a patient in a padded cell. Next week, he'll be impersonating a rich psychiatrist in Beverly Hills. Dan Aykroyd. You are the strangest shrink I've ever met. Walter Matthau. I finally found a place I fit in as well as I do the Nut House. Beverly Hills. The Couch Trip, rated R. Special sneak preview, Saturday, January 9th. They used to call me a tomboy. I'd climb these trees in my daddy's groves and eat the oranges fresh picked. I'd come home with orange nails and a sticky chin, and Mom would put me right in the tub. That fresh picked goodness is captured by Tropicana Pure Premium. The other major brands add things to or take things out of their juice. With Pure Premium, the way the rain and the sun make it is the way you taste it. Tropicana Pure Premium. You just can't pick a better juice. And he's the 11th of 12 children, six brothers, six sisters. Two of his brothers, as you see right there, are priests, one in St. Louis, one in the state of Maine. And, and someone asked Dick McPherson, he says, did you ever want to be a priest? He says, no. He says, but I do attend mass most every morning. But he says, don't canonize me. He says, my church is for sinners, not saints. Well, a little divine help from within the family ranks can't hurt you. It is second down. Now the ball at the 12, second and eight for Syracuse. The Orange men's first real threat of the ball game. McPherson has been the main man as he has been all season. He's got the ball. Stand up, quick pop, into the end zone. 
penalty flag, they call touchdown. Probably interference on the play, and I think the TD will stand. They burned Perry Reed on that play, who is replacing Kevin Porter, and it was Glover who did it. We have defensive pass interference. Touchdown, Syracuse. The touchdown is good, and the penalty would be assessed on the kickoff. Tim Bessling now will try to tie the ball game. The holder is Todd Philcox. The snapper is Brian Featheroff. The kick is good. Tim Bessling has never missed an extra point in his college career. 72 of 72 now, and we're all even the USF and G Sugar Bowl. Let's go back and take a look why this works. Here's Glover. He's going to run a slant. Now, when the option starts this way and McPherson comes, the safety who is right in the way comes up. McPherson will step back and throw the ball right where the safety was for the touchdown. This is what an option will do. Forces the backs up. He says, if you're coming up, there's a nice hole there and a nice throw and a big touchdown. That wasn't a bad catch by Glover under some duress. A very nice catch. Nice throw, nice catch. You know, Syracuse being behind is nothing new for them. They were behind three times this year. In fact, the last two games they were behind and came back to win both of them. Yeah, that West Virginia finale of the season was a un last second thing. Unbelievable. Take a look at the time of possession. Syracuse on the left controlling it for more than 10 minutes. Auburn had helped to be able to one, be the team that controlled the football. Well, now the Tigers know they're in a football game, don't they? I think they knew that Syracuse was going to come back. This is going to be an exciting game. You know, I asked, let's, let's take a look at this again from the line side. Good protection up front, which is always key. Offensive line doesn't get credited for very much, but you talk to the quarterbacks, look at an outstanding catch. And there you said, Keith, Perry Reed, who is subbing for Kevin Porter, was the man who they were working on. He's just a question. He hasn't yeah. had a whole lot of time at that position. You I guess, Bob, that may be one of the toughest spots if you're gonna have to go out and, and play fresh. Uh, cornerback's got to be about the toughest place you can go. I mean, you can hide a defensive linebacker or a defensive lineman, but, but you're out on a corner one-on-one. -on -one, you can control the outcome of a football game. Harry Mose is the man in the middle now for Besslings kickoff. Harry is another freshman out of Lake Wales, Florida, 200-pounder, and he's, he's moving. James Joseph, their starting tailback, out with a knee injury. He'll be back next year. So they're deep at running back. Mose at the goal line. Good coverage by Syracuse, and they've stopped him just short of the 15-yard line. Next Saturday night, ABC Sports presents a primetime special, the U.S. Figure Skating Championship, America's finest women, including defending U.S. ladies champion Jill Trinery, Debbie Thomas, and Karen Cadavis were off. It'll be live except on the West Coast, 8 Eastern and Pacific, 7 Central, next Saturday night on ABC Sports. The ball is just inside the 15 for Auburn. Their first possession of the ball game, they took it at their 13. 7-7 seven, seven ball game, second quarter. Stanley. Trying to wait for his blocks to develop. They didn't. And he moves it out just to the 16, close to the set, maybe over the 16. Just a toss sweep. This is one of the plays that Syracuse wanted to find out about when they went down in the spring to see the Auburn program. The toss sweep and how they practice to be so physical out there on the football field. David Holmes, the corner number 38. You saw him come up to the outside and turn that play back in. So he was the key man. Nothing there. That was Reggie Ware, number 36. 
That time, Ted Gregory, the nose guard, just stood him up and stuck him. Here's why everybody was talking about Gregory. 93, the center can't control him. Here, they block him one-on-one, -on -one, and you can't do that. Penn State tried to block him one-on-one, -on -one, and he had a field day. He made like 16 or 17 tackles. You have to have two men on him to start with till one of them can control him. It'll be third down and about eight for Auburn. He's lean and nasty, I have told, especially when he was hurt, Keith. Nobody likes to be hurt and not play in the ball games, but he was even nastier when he wasn't in there. <laughs> Berger swings it out. Daniel. Daniel dives for the marker, and he's going to have a first down unless the penalty is against Auburn. There's a flag on the field. Against Auburn. Wipes out the first down. Matt Dye has gone more to a passing game this year because of necessity. He really doesn't have those outstanding running backs that he's had here in the past. Guys like Brent Fullwood, Bo Jackson, Lionel James, James Brooks, William Andrews, Joe Cribbs. On the oh. offense, it'll still be third down. Let's watch the right side and see if we can see a hold. Right there, yep, the yep. left guard. The right guard with his left hand out. That's Garner, number 76, scoring two points on a takedown. With Pat Dye going more to the passing game out of necessity. Ball back inside the nine, third down and 17. On that little delay to Stanley, Syracuse forms it. Now, Auburn will punt out of the end zone. And pressure's on Brian Schulman, the junior from Brentwood, Tennessee. Let's see if Syracuse goes after it here. Nope, doesn't look like it. Tommy Kane is standing back across midfield. First punt today by Brian Schulman was a 40-yarder. There's no pressure. It's a low kick, though it may give Kane some room. Takes it at the 45. Changes his direction. Now gets a block, and what a block! And comes back across midfield. And number 10, Marcus Paul, threw a spectacular block that freed Kane for a 13-yard return after a 47-yard punt. Watch number 41 for Auburn. He's the man that's going to be blocked. And Marcus Paul, number 10, right? Right here is going to just deck him. And whenever that happens, the man starts one way, comes back. You can normally look for some of those wipeout blocks. Syracuse with the ball at the Auburn 42. Introducing the 1988 Eagle Premier, the first in a series of sophisticated automobiles from the new Jeep Eagle division of the Chrysler Corporation. This morning, my boss comes storming into my office and yells, why did you switch from AT&T to MCI? So I tell him how much money MCI is saving as compared to Watts, and now with MCI, we're saving up to 25% on credit card calls. Then he screams, but AT&T's better quality. Our calls have been sounding great. When did you do this, anyway? I say, seven months ago, sir. Until you call, you'll never know how much better a long-distance company can be. MCI. Let us show you. <laughs> 